Now today I want to talk about interior breath stops. We've talked a lot about the concept of, of stopping the breath, and we haven't really worried about exactly if it's inside or outside. Let's say I go, pa, pa, that's on my lips, so it's on the outside. If I do one up here, pa, pa, that's, on, that's really against my skull right here, so it's also the outside. What if I do one of my waistline in the back? Pa, pa, it's still on, it's still on the outside. No. What we want to do today is take a look at what is happening on the inside when you're doing these. So I go, pa, pa, now I've got to stop on the lips. So then I'm going to look back inside and say, now wait a minute. Where is the point of phonation? Where am I singing back there? What shape is it? What's going on back there in the back of my throat? See? So I go, pa, pa, ah, 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 So I can use that breath stop location and sing anything and everything with it. So we're going to go through these breath stops that we do generally. You know, I'm some of a breath stop fanatic anyway. And uh, I like to at least use the locations, even though sometimes we're just sighing. If I sigh there, I get, oh. All right. Now, that is a little bit more vague, but it is still a, 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 a place in the back where things happen. Oh. See, right now I'm thinking about my breath going down here. Oh. But what's happening where the breath stops? Listen. Oh, 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 where is that? So I sang where the breath is actually stopped in my tube. You have a trachea that goes all the way down, and if I can deliberately place my voice in different places, you've all heard me do all these things, let's say I want this one. Pa, pa, uh, 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 uh. Where is my point of stop, breath stop, stopping? On the inside. So if you're clever, and you will do a lot of breath stops because they're the secret of singing. Some people say ignore the breath, ignore the voice completely because the voice is always a result of what you do with the breath. That was Richard Tucker's philosophy. He said the voice, the voice does nothing. The breath does everything. You pick up a saxophone, it does nothing. You have to blow into it. So it's the air that's going to decide and how you blow it, how consistently and how smoothly. And, and so the, the idea is we are very much like a reed instrument. We have a vibrating reed here. We have, uh, a, we have a phonator that people like to compare with a, a megaphone. Someone like uh, Herbert Chisholm said it, the, that the, the, the true mouth of a singer is the pharynx. See? So everybody's singing what's going on, and uh, a lot of people are very obsessed with this resonance up here. If I go, nye, 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 nye. now where is the point of phonation, for instance? Where is my breath stop point back there? The breath is not pouring out of my nose. It stopped somewhere. Right now, I think I'm stopping it up here. Pa, pa, ma, but where am I actually making the vowel and where's my breath stopping to support my, that pharyngeal uh, shape I'm using? Why in the world would you study for years, right? When all it's doing is totally destroying any natural shape you have in your throat for making vowels. So all my vowels are now modified and they have to fit into that little hole like that, right? So many singers sing nasal, uh, nasally thinking that they're actually focusing. And so focusing was, was a word that has invented, been invented in modern times by people who never were singers. They never could sing anywhere. But they developed this idea of the focus. Well, that's exactly backwards. If you have one of these, if you have one of these things, where's the focus? 
This thing is designed to work a certain way. So if you open your throat, yawn, and go nye, nye, what you're doing is opening the back of the, or this becomes the back of the megaphone. It's in your throat, it opens wide, and then you try to put your voice through a little hole. Nye, 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 nye. Well, it's, it's, it's a disaster. So people studied for years that a guy, the first, uh, the first doctor uh, in voice from Juilliard, some guy came to me and he couldn't, couldn't do the song, couldn't sing the songs for do his last recital there. So he had to work with somebody to show him how to sing. He didn't know, I knew everything. He knew the history of this, the makeup of that, and took everything. But he didn't know how to sing after all those years. Now, babies go, ah, 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 do people ever sing up here who use that? <laughs> well, I'm not really doing like a baby. I'm modifying. Because I tend to modify, I tend to go with the sound of the baby. And we don't must do that. We must do what the baby does. And babies cough. I've had four of them. And when they cry, they go, <laughs> and it's all down here. Right? So Manuel Garcia made a fantastic career as a boy teacher uh, by teaching what he called the miniature cough, like babies. So you listen to babies. So if I do that, <laughs> where is my breath stop? There's no breath coming out of me now when I do that. <laughs> See? So you can prove it any time just like this. <laughs> There's no breath coming out. Nothing's coming out but sound. The question is, is it a good sound? People like that. I don't know. We'll see. It seems to lie, the uh, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. I think beauty and singing probably lies in the ear of the listener. Some people love, love that sort of nasal sound. I, I remember working on a recording in Europe, and, I, and, and uh, this conductor wanted more and more nail nose, more and more nasal. He said, this is what they like here. Is he want me to sing? Oh, I can do it, no problem. All I'll do is decide where the breath stop's going to be. And it sounds nasal, but it's not exactly nasal. But let's see. Yeah, that was nasal. See? I was wrong. I was innocent. I've made a mistake. I thought it wasn't nasal. I thought it sounded it was supposed to sound really good. Everybody's telling me it sounds good. And it's awful. Now, one way, if I do this now, what happens? It's not nasal anymore. Where is my breath stop, my interior breath stop? And that's the question. You have to learn to analyze them. Some people use staccatos all the time. They go, ba 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 Caruso said the ah vowel is very far back and low in the throat. <gasps> Can you imagine saying that it's at, at, in, 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 in New York today, in modern America? Everybody's going, nee, nee, nee. and he's saying, no, no, it's way back, way back in the back of the throat and low in the throat. Well, what if I do that? What if I want to stop my breath back here, let's say? So I go, huh. Huh. oh, no, I'm about to stop there. No! It's out of my nose. So those teachers that want the singers to sing and think that's resonance don't know what they're doing because when you get up and sing through your nose in a 5,000 seat theater with a 100 piece orchestra, guess what? Nobody's going to hear you. That sound, for some reason, what, what there is of it blends with the orchestra somehow. And the ones with the big voices, like my Delmonico, how did Delmonico sing? And he made no bones about it. His breath stop was right here. And he'd go, oh, 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 eh, eh, e, e, oh. I studied with him for about six months. And he, he was, he was uh, like, do, I don't know what you call those. They weren't staccatos. They were just grunts. I don't know. But he did this. Oh, oh, eh, eh, e, e, oh, 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 oh. If I sing like that, oh, ah, 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 all of my, all of my, uh, my words are being stopped on that point. Now, he was criticized all the time because he didn't sing enough soft notes, but he had like the biggest voice in the world. So he capitalized on, on the tremendous power of his voice. 
So we don't want to just sing all the time, uh, big, do we? I mean, uh, we don't. That's, it's not exactly yelling. Yelling has a different, a different uh, breath stop point. If you really yell, hey, oh, that, that's that's way up here somewhere. So uh, we don't do that. But we do stop and think. I'm going to sing sweetly. I hope. And where is my? What is the interior breath stop doing that while I'm doing that? See, I'm singing or something like. Or something like Where is my interior? If, if I'm using a breath stop, let's say it's on my chest. Ah, 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 right there. All right, now that works fine. But where is its interior stop? See? Is this the interior stop? Because there's no vowel down there. The vowels have to be done in the pharynx. So it's a very, very complicated thing that's going on back there. And we try to simplify it and, and, and just decide what we do. Now, I can deliberately do something that will have a big influence on my, on my sound that I make. Shall I, go, shall I make a, a, a totally relaxed trachea? If you want your throat and your trachea and your, all this to be loose, you cannot undo muscles up here all the time because you're busy working in your throat. So what you do is you go way down below where the breathing is and you go in your lower back and you suck down like this and you go. And when you breathe way down there in that lower part, the entire throat falls and will follow. And uh, there are singers literally that make the, 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 the Adam's apple or the larynx completely disappear. It goes, uh, they, they have such breathing in power uh, that they can suck it and make it disappear. Now, where is where is the breath stop? Where's the interior breath stop when you do that? So I go. See, my whole throat went down like this. Where is the breath stop now? Where is it going? To, I, I can't put it up here. That'll make me have to raise my whole throat back up. And I breathe to get it down. So I went. No. Franco Corelli always talked about singing behind the breath stop. I'm sorry, not behind the breath stop. I'm trying to take you back. Behind the glottal stroke. If I do ah, 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 that's a glottal stroke. Well, Caruso said in his book that that means some, that someone is singing too far forward in the throat. All right, so then Corelli took that more, better than anyone else. I mean, I've tried it myself, I've tried it, but he was a he was the master of it. He learned to sing behind the glottal stroke all the time. And when you heard him warming up, he would be going, <laughs> He and Jerome Hines did it both, all the time. Hines sang, what, 53 years at the Metropolitan Opera or something, never had a vocal problem? Sucking the air in and down. <laughs> there is a medical name, it's called the Muller Maneuver. But well, what does it do to your phonation? Where are your vowels and where is the breath stop I'm going to use to control my breath so I can, I can sing a line or make some notes, get some high notes or something. So if I, if I use that spot, is it too far down in my throat? Well, the gang, this gang goes, ding, ding, ding. We say, of course. But if I go behind the glottal stroke, Ah, 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 and I'm there. And I go, ah, 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 Let's say I, you know, I've had people come to me from, from let's say New York, all over the world. I, I teach in, I think, forty three countries right now. So you got all these different accents when they speak English. And of course, some of them don't speak English. So you say, uh, you know, you're from, uh, you're from the Bronx, New York, and you talk like this all the time. What's the point? You're gonna, and you want to be a singer, so you're singing. Oh, 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 oh. What do you tell that person? Well, what you can tell them is to stop the breath in, in the interior breath stop and this didn't go to an Italian who's saying, Dammi la tazza caffè! 
Vogliamo andare a girare per... What's a good example? You know, vogliamo cantare stasera. And I'm going, ah, 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 ah. Then I have to say, wait a minute, what, what am I, where's the breast stop if I use that shape? And the shape is sort of like this. Well, Jan Kippur, one of the greatest voices, one of the great singers, the greatest Polish t singer, especially tenor, who did the first two adults in England, stuff like that. He was a big, big deal career. He always sang with the breast stop on his back lower teeth. Now think about that. Here we go. And he was Polish. He wasn't Italian. So somebody must have told him along the way. I never, I never met him, never got a chance to talk to him. But the word was out how he was singing. See? And there's this great singer named Alfred Pickerberry that sang in, uh, in, in, uh, in London. He used to sing right here where his tongue touched his lower lip, like that. <laughs> People loved him. They were crazy about him. In fact, he was the king of the theater in Vienna until Helga Rosfinger sang down there, and then Rosfinger became the king. How did Rosfinger sing? Now, I studied Rosfinger for about a year and a half, and... Uh, he used the chimpanzee a lot. The chimpanzee means you go, <laughs> I'm going to ask myself that question that I'm afraid to ask, which is, where are my vowels? Where would my breath stop be? See? We're back to the middle maneuver, but in an interrupted version, and very active down here. So you go, <laughs> now I feel very much something down there where I can control my breath. It's called an interior breath stop. So I'm going to go. <laughs> so I'm literally stopping my breath by, I'm way down here like this, sucking that down. And I'm stopping my breath way down there, way down here. Then you have some of the singers that, uh, like for instance, uh, I'm trying to think, some of, some of them sang, in their lower back at the waistline. Crystal Ludwig was famous for singing between her shoulder blades. So if I do this, you hear it's all resonant up there. If I think resonance and use that, where would I put my, where, how would I control my breath? See? So I stopped my breath right here. But she went the opposite. She went down between her shoulder blades and stopped it down there. So I take a breath. And then I go. In other words, any place I stop my breath will let me sing. I hope that's the point that's being made here. I've done a number of uh, examples of stopping the breath on these, some of these tapes. Uh, sometimes to lead into something else. and um, But whatever you do, if you, they ask Adelina Patti, who's supposed to be the only perfect singer who ever lived, how do you, what do you think about when you sing? She said, don't sing breathy. So when I'm singing all of these, no matter where they are, they don't leak air. See? We've got that figured out that we don't leak air when we sing. Now, where is the breath stop? Which breath stop are you going to use? I've, I've taught a whole of these videos. I can't remember. I've done so many videos. I can't remember what I did. But I hope I taught the circle of the chakras, uh, uh, to, how to use those. Yoga, the whole yoga circle of chakras, how you use it to stop the breath all the way up and all the way down and up and around and like this. So you, you, you pick a chakra. Let's say the, the abdomen, halfway between the navel and the uh, pubic bone, right in the center of the abdomen. And I go, oh, the breath didn't move, but my mind has got this breath up located right in the center of my abdomen. What do you think of that? Tito Skipa, another great tenor, and, uh, and uh, what's her name? Oh, I've forgotten her name. Muzio, Claudia Muzio. 
People went mad. You should read what Lauri Volpe wrote about her. Lauri Volpe was not an intellectual and made, wrote a lot of books and things. And he wrote about her some the most the raving praise for a singer. You never read anywhere better than what he wrote of Muzio. Muzio was the heart rending, the heart breaking. Because there was such emotion. You listen to her. You, all you wanted to do was weep and cry and laugh. And he went on and on and on. Where did she sing? She sighed, right here. <sighs> And so did Tito Schipo. So if I sigh right here and I go, oh, should I be looking for my, for my breast top up here somewhere or not? I can do it. I can go, oh, see, not nasal. But those two people in particular, I happen to know, at least I was told by, by, by people who know, um, that, that they stopped the breath here, but they sighed there, and then they stopped the sigh here. In fact, somebody wrote me this week and said, how do I stop the sigh? If I start sighing, how do I stop it? Well, you pick a spot and go, ah. this one I stopped right here. See, these are interior breath stops. I can do exterior also. They're on the lips. And I did, I covered this, I think, pretty thoroughly. Every singer wants to be a great singer and has to deal with a lot of different kinds of repertoire and style and vocal stuff. Really needs to get those breath stop cycles in his warm up, in a her warm up. See, if if I'm going to go, and my throat is completely relaxed when I do that. See, and what's amazing is it doesn't blow the paper. when I go without blowing the paper. So some breast stops you find by doing it by doing it first and then and then looking to see where it is. And some you you plan. This Valsava maneuver, which is the opposite of Miller. Miller's pulling in and stopping. A hiccup is a Miller maneuver and some people use the hiccup when they sing. Right? But the 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 Vassal maneuver is out. Now we're back to the to the to the uh, miniature cough because the cough has stopped. I build up pressure here, and then I release the pressure against here, and you believe it or not, you can sing that way forever. They asked by Matteo Battistini, it was the greatest baritone in history, uh, uh, what do you think about when you're singing? He said, I press my chest. Well, what does that mean? He's going, <coughs> and some things you can actually hear the cough. On, on, you, you'll hear them going, and you hear that, that, what Garcia called the miniature cough. You can call it the squeeze, you can call it anything you want, but it is a certain sound that releases compression, and there is a compression here, and when I cough, I, re I, I release that compression. So I go, <coughs> <coughs> so I'm building up pressure here, and then I'm, I'm, I'm ex letting it explode through my voice to clear my throat, to really cough in my chest, but there's a way to cough where babies cough, and the babies seem to do it just to affect the, the, the voice. They go, Jennifer, ah, ah, ah. Like to talk. La, 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 la. Alexa, stop. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, it may sound confusing, but you have to remember that you breathe in this way and you breathe out that way. So it's pretty darn simple also. I breathe in this way and I want certain things to happen. And I breathe out this way, I want certain things to happen. And when I sing, I want certain things to happen. On the way out, 
right? Uh, so many singers are looking for the rest of us down here. But that's too low. It doesn't really carry in the theater. The one you want is the one that's above this. So uh, Max Lorenzo sang all the big heavy Wagner parts like like uh, um, Siegfried and Tannhäuser and Tristan and Isolde. Those operas, were, were, they're monsters. The orchestras are 130 places. Everybody plays as loud as they can all the time and the tenor singing his middle voice. So Max Lorenz uh, it, 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 solved it by singing what he called Over the Hung Line. So he'd go, Hung! Uh, and then you pronounce the vowel over it and put it in his forehead. So you go, so that's a different, almost a different philosophy of singing, which is find the resonance and then sing that resonance all the time. People are confused because the nasal resonance is the one that Caruso said in his book, never sing to the nasal cavity. It's against all the rules of song. You cannot make diction. Nobody can understand you well. They can't hear you in the theater. They can't hear the melody. The voice doesn't make music very well. So why in the world would I spend years learning to sing in my nose when, when it's, it's totally useless in a, in, a, in a big theater? And then they'll say, oh, it's a, it's a pity his voice is so ugly. He's a very good singer. Am I a good singer if I do that? What do you sing? Just because I can sing smoothly. I've got control and I can make the melody and all that. But what about the sound? Everybody says, oh, it's a pity his voice is so ugly, but he's a very good singer. But the truth is I'm not a good singer. I'm not. I've got certain parts of, of singing under control, which is maybe legato, right? sustaining things like but guess what singing is supposed to be bel canto beautiful singing right you're supposed to sing it in a way so that it sounds as pretty as your voice is capable of making it see so you have all these sounds uh, i like to i like to demonstrate once in a while uh what what really sounds like nasal singing is not nasal singing it's not really in the nose what it is, it's a shallow vowel that goes like this. Ah, ah. Now, what do I do if I want to correct that? Well, how about I change the way I phonate the vowel? Let's see. There's a spectrum there. There's an ah one end of it and the all oh, the other end of it which one do you prefer you can also maybe prefer the one that would stop in the middle not all the way back see see maybe that's all the the uh, phonation I need for everybody to like it Usually somebody likes it if you can sing the vowels very clearly. And uh, I remember when I was in Italy, I sang a lot and I sobbed and they loved to sob. But when I got back up north, I said, what are you doing? That's horrible. Stop doing this. So you can only do it in Italy. I couldn't sob anywhere else. Uh, but what does it do? A sob is a form of valsalva maneuver. And you go... Ooh, which is a a, a, a a leaking falsetto, really a true falsetto tone. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. When I attach it to my diaphragm, it stops leaking. Where is it attached? Where do you feel it? Ooh, ah, the women must go, the ladies, pardon me, must go, ah, ah, ah. so their head voice, as we call it, Oh, which is somewhat equivalent to a falsetto in a man's voice, uh, must be a somewhere attached to, to somewhere inside that it sounds good. They're going, ah, it sounds terrible. See? So these people keep trying to say, and, oh, the poor thing, really, it's pitiful. You're just being led in the wrong direction. So if I go, ah, that is a falsetto attachment. It used to have a name, right, in the old days. 
It was uh, uh, il punto d'attacca, the point of attachment. Where do I attach that? Ooh, ah, now, where is it? Do you feel it somewhere when you do that? I'm talking about the men now mostly. The women go, oh, oh, oh. You're a zinger middle of going, Timon, Or Nelly Melba going, Why can't you what were they doing? Go, ooh, clucking like old chickens. What were they doing? But they all sounded fantastic, right? Uh, and, of course, the, the, the most notorious cracker among the great singers was Benjamino Gigli. Not cracker, I take it back. Uh, uh, Sauber, so I'm trying to say. He sobbed all the time. But my teacher was great friends with him. She used to say, Olga Reese was her name. And she used to say, he had, it was horrible. I stopped going to the opera. I could not listen to the sobbing. But I must say, between the sobs, it was the most magnificent voice I ever heard. <laughs> so people worshipped his, his voice. It's so gorgeous. They called it. But was it because of that sob that he sounded so good? Who was that? Anyway, if I structure, let's say the Italians uh, up north say, Dama la tazza cafe. But if you go to Naples, they say, Dama la tazza cafe. They say, come dici il cotto bo? Perché mi dici questo vuole amare? If you go up north. And down south, they go, but come dici il cotto bo? Right? Well, which one am I going to sing with? They're supposed to be singing Italian. Not, not people that are in Naples, they live in Naples, grew up in Naples and sing a Napoleon song. They're the only ones that probably know how to do it right. Right? Uh, Caruso is a good example because he recorded songs in, in the true dialect. He was from Naples. But he had to learn and speak Italian. People forget that he and De Lucia and Rosa Poncel, some of the greatest singers in history, who, had, who Poncel's family was Neapolitan. She grew up in Connecticut. Uh, but her family was all Neapolitan. And she grew up hearing that sound uh, when, you know, when she was a child. And if I go, Poco, instead of Perché, I go, Poco. Where is my breath stop? Uh, am I using the resonance stop or am I using the, my breath someplace? How about a phonation stop? See? So I just wanted to throw this out as something that once you get a little bit advanced and you start getting so that you can really handle some of this uh, big repertoire, you will, you will get very interested in, uh, in how you should phonate as you go along. You got, uh, you know, you got Tanhoi's, he goes, If I go, It's entirely the wrong way to, to, to say the words. See? In, in, in heavy German music, right? Now, it's different to say, uh, Die Weisheit zu lehren, dieser Knaben, sei wie mir ins Herz gegraben. That's Matthew Flute. That's a whole different story. You know what? I'm in the Seattle area, and we got sunshine today, but it's 14 degrees. <laughs> sunshine. Hello. Hello. Are you that? We're so, uh, it's so unusual. To, to, what is that strange ray ball of fire outside my window? So anyway... I just want to touch on that, that when you're doing, you want to say that ah, then you do a Yankee put it in and stop your breath on your mo on your rear molars, like this. Do the lowers. <laughs> then do the uppers. <laughs> and then do all four at the same time. <laughs> And then it sounds, believe it or not, Kipuras was able to be very successful singing Italian music in spite of his Polish voice. <laughs> it's a fantastic voice. So how did I do that? Nessun dorma! You think that famous, Caruso told uh, Rosa Moncel to keep a rectangle in the back of her neck all the time. Well, how do you make a rectangle? What's the best way to do a rectangle? Well, what if you do all of your molars at the same time? See, what shape is it? Look at that. See? Got it? All right.
Let's see if we can make some sense out of some of that. <laughs> you can always write me and say, I didn't get a word of it. Okay, I'll try again. Okay? Okay. Bye.